Hey, uh, Ganon, you want to simmer down? I'm trying to record a video here, jeez. Anyways, hey guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So here we are doing something a little bit different. As you can tell, we're taking on the final boss. Well, not actually taking on the final boss, but we're here at the final boss fight, and we have the Bow of Light with us. And well, my goal here is to actually escape the final boss fight. Yeah, so while kind of messing around with this game, I figured out a way of uh, getting out of bound. Obviously, I wasn't the first to do so, but I do think it's really cool, and this was not it, but this is also a glitch you could do. As you can see, I've put myself into the wall, but pretty much what I want to do is this exact thing, but on the other side, and this will put me out of bound. Um, Uh-oh. Okay, well, hopefully I can escape this first. Come on, Link. <laughs> Hurry, please. Well, I can't really do anything, Zelda. I'm really glad I was able to capture this glitch on uh, screen as well. But there we go. Okay, we got off, and now let me try to do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get off my mount while I'm in between two... Okay, maybe this is too close. So let's keep moving here, and then let's get off. There we go. All right, and voila. As you can see, I've escaped the battlefield with the bow of light. Haha, <laughs> I did it. I cheated the game. I have an infinite bow that will never break. Yes, yes. But actually, it's not that exciting because uh, I don't believe you can save at all. As you can see, you can't save right now. If I want to teleport out of here, let's go ahead and try to teleport to a shrine. Yeah, you can't teleport to a shrine either. You can't do any of that. So what are we supposed to do when we're trapped here? Well, um, yeah, it's a good thing that I uh, actually checked out whether or not, you know, other people discovered this. Because what I figured out is if you make your way to Larland Village and play uh, a certain minigame, you'll be able to give yourself access to saving and teleporting and all of that. So I want to regain access to all of that because as you can see, all of Hyrule is loaded but without any enemies and you're still in the setting of the battlefield but to leave like the whole battlefield setting you just have to I guess play a specific minigame but since there are no NPCs uh, the only minigame we can trigger will be um, the one in Lurland Village so yeah we're gonna go ahead and head there but as you can see it's gonna take us a while to make our way there without teleporting and I can't get opponent out of the um, out of bounds section so I'm kind of in trouble in that regard but here we are in the ranch ruins you know Lon Lon Ranch I don't know how many years ago but obviously over 10,000 so yeah but I'm so glad I got this oh yeah so we could use this as much as we want it's infinite and it will never break literally we have max arrows light arrows you can also get your own version of the light arrow that will break which is the twilight bow uh, through the Princess Zelda amiibo for the Smash Bros, which is the Twilight uh, Zelda, of course, and um, yeah, that one is actually really nice, but sadly it breaks, though it still gives you infinite uh, arrows, which is awesome, but alright, so yeah, our goal is to pretty much continue heading south to Luralin, but since animals are the only thing that really exists instead of NPCs and enemies that spawn, I guess, like that. But I don't believe we're going to find Bakublins. We'll only find overworld bosses, which I do want to use the Bow of Light on and see how much damage it will take to kill off one of these guys. And I mean, we can be as reckless as we want. I don't have to aim for the eye. I don't have to do anything because, you know, it's the Bow of Light, of course. And wait, he's dead. Oh my god, the HP took a while to load. We killed him so fast. Yeah, because obviously the Bow of Light also has a um, range of infinite, I guess. Look at this. If I shoot it, it will never actually land. It just constantly shoots, which is so awesome. This is actually doesn't land. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe just its range is so ridiculous that it looks like it. Let's watch it, because I'm actually really curious. No, it's coming down. Oh, wow. Okay. And then it, like, despawns, or it's too far away that we can't even see it but uh, either way really cool so yeah we don't have access to our map at least on the screen yet until we leave this whole battlefield but if we look back we could see uh, Dark Beast Ganon in this uh, giant wall of light that kind of follows us letting us know that you know that's the out of bounds section I obviously this was none of this was meant to be uh, explored when this battle is happening but it's so insane that everything is loaded and something you'll notice and I believe the main reason why we can't teleport to shrines 
Well, actually, I don't even think it matters because once we can teleport to shrines in this battle mode, you'll still notice something interesting. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and show this off. I haven't really done much in this mode where, you know, we have the light, the bow of light, and, you know, Dark Beast getting is happening. But regardless, the game is glitched. And even if we are going to get an option to save at Learnland Village, you don't want to save. I highly suggest not doing that because you will glitch out your game entirely to where Dark Beast Ganon will constantly be roaming Hyrule and uh, every time you come near it, it will do the same thing that's happening right now until you make your way back to Learnland Village and reset the whole side quest. I don't know if there's other ways to uh, fix it, but that's pretty much what works so far and I mean I don't really know too much about this glitch. I literally figured out the other day, so yeah, I had to record it and show it to you guys, but I love how the battle's playing while, well, you know, we're in Hyrule Field. Such an epic battle. But yeah, here's a stable. Here's an example of nothing being around. Not even, yeah, the guy behind the table for the stable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah, since we are running down here, I'm really hoping we'll come across some horses because, I mean, we see other animals, at least animals that we hunt for. So hopefully we can find horses, maybe one that I can tame, and make the process to heading to Lurland Village much quicker but as you can see Korok seeds whether we've gotten them or not they're gone because I do believe there would have been those little like uh, windmill thingies I don't re I keep forgetting the name for them but yeah I believe there would have been one of them and uh, we could have played like a little Korok seed mini game that would have given us a Korok seed and yeah here would have been a camp but as you can see none of it exists right now because I guess it's just not loaded in for this boss fight but still really interesting but I do know horses are loaded in at least I'm certain 99% certain okay no I'm 100% certain I know they are it's just we're having trouble finding any right now because yeah the animals stay luckily you know it is breath of the wild that's something that never leaves these worlds but you may notice all of the towers are still intact but we don't see any blue glow of the shrines and yes that's because the shrines don't exist really and I'm gonna go ahead and show off what I mean so there should be a shrine right over here um, and as you can see yeah there's nothing and if you don't believe me let me actually walk closer it should give me the shrine name right I think uh, yeah it should be right here aha yes and yeah this is where the shrine is look we're standing on nothing what the frick it's so weird and here's the wall to the shrine and yeah I guess the shrines aren't a part of the overworld map which makes sense because something I noticed about the shrines within this game, um, or just the, generally, this is the only game that has shrines. So, just, yeah, the shrines in general, uh, throughout the overworld, they have a different glow than even the towers. Like, even though the towers, when activated, glow the same blue as shrines, sh the shrines, like, blue outshine anything else. Like, uh, even the weather condition, you know, whether it affects the lighting, no matter what, the shrine still looks intact like it's still that really you know strong blue color unlike this where it kind of gets uh, lighter in color because of the fog because the weather all of that so I do believe yeah maybe they made the shrines a separate thing so that way they stand out and their color stands and they aren't really affected by the overworld because yeah the shrines shine really bright compared to anything else so I believe maybe that's the reason but I, I don't really know why? I mean, either way, they load you out of the map, so it makes sense in why they're not a part of the map in general. It's really cool that we can see Hyrule without shrines, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to teleport to these invisible shrines once we reach Lurlin. And come on, where are some horses? Like, we should have found some by now. I mean, I haven't really looked in the grass fields themselves. I do believe that would have been an easier chance to find some, but... I mean, might as well run. The music is nice, and, uh, yeah, if we find some along the way, I'll definitely, uh, ride one. But, yeah, just pretty much our journey right now is to make it to Lurlin. And it is a little annoying hearing Zelda constantly in the background speaking, telling us that, yeah, you know, the weak points for Ganon are available and for us to attack. But, whatever. All right. Oh, sweet. We can go ahead and test out the uh, Bow of Light on a Yiga clan member and yeah we dispose of him pretty easily not bad but um, sadly there's no other enemies we could chop it's only overworld enemies and then obviously the Yiga clan members that spawn in 
Um, I guess it's like, yeah, specific stuff that will spawn in like that, not stuff that are originally in the game. But yeah, if you do get a Blood Moon during this as well, um, it just disappears, at least during the actual boss fight. So I, I do believe when I uploaded, you know, the actual final boss fight, got a lot of comments asking what would happen. And for those wondering, because I did get one, because I've faced uh, the final battle many times already now, just messing around. And that's how I pretty much figured out this glitch. But my point is that, um, yeah, the uh, overall, the final boss fight uh, is just generally, actually, I forget, wait, what was I even saying right now? I completely lost track, but I was saying, because it was so, I was trying to get whatever I was saying across. Okay, whatever, it doesn't really matter what I am saying right now, but my point is, let's just get to where we need to go so I can, uh, get on with things, so I can actually show off more, because I want to show off other parts of this, but, yeah. Um, but I think in general what I was talking about is I've played this boss battle a lot, and it, yeah. I was kind of tinkering around with how maybe to get the bow of light because I really wanted to uh, use an item that never breaks. It sucks that every item breaks. There's no like true attachment to any of the items within this game. Not even the Master Sword. Like, I mean, no, I'll be honest. I, I am pretty attached to the Master Sword because I know if it does break, it will come back. But I do wish other items were like that. Or, or if Nintendo allowed you to... um. To like, oh wow, wait, the music is, that was weird, the music got like really intense for a second, or maybe I just heard a certain part of the song that I never heard before, but anyways, as I was saying, um, yeah, it would have been really nice to have more items that just kind of came back and, aha, wait, I think we're good. Can we teleport? We got our map now. Oh, you can't travel yet. Okay. But at least the music is gone. And there are horses too. So this is perfect. We've escaped the battlefield. And now it's time to tame a steed. All right. And you're going to... I don't think this one's going to be that. Okay. Didn't even bother. Yeah, this one's going to suck. But whatever. It's faster than, you know, trekking on foot. So I'm not going to complain. We got a horse. If I find a better one... I'm probably going to uh, use that one, but all right. <laughs> Anyways, back to what I was saying. Yeah, I wish there was an item, or at least there was like a blacksmith within the game to when your items start glowing red and it says badly damaged, then if you keep using it, it breaks for good. Yes, you're punished for it. I understand that. But what if they had a blacksmith within the game that you can easily visit when your item is badly damaged and then he fixes it for you and it becomes, you know, back to its full durability. And every time that happens, you just stop using it. So that way, if you're, you know, good with your resources and you don't completely break an item, you can keep it infinitely and use it as long as you're careful with it. I think that'd be a really nice way and still not defeat the whole, um, you know, tactic in the sense of like having, okay, come on, please horse, let's get going. But yeah, not defeat the whole sense of like having to constantly farm items, because I get that. You know, you should constantly have to farm items, but, um, you know, that's how the whole game is set, but I don't know, it just would have been better in a different way, but, alright, I just realized I'm kind of heading the wrong way now, because I was letting the horse head its own way, and it, it's already hard to control as is, so you know, what? I'm just gonna control the pathway and go where I need to go, which is Learn Lund Village, but, oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the one issue of not bringing a pony with us. I do believe there is maybe a way to bring a pony outside of the battlefield, which would have been nice, but at least I don't know of it. Like I said, I literally figured this out the other day, and I really wanted to, like, show you guys the uh, glitch in general. So, oh yeah, and our Master Sword is uh, always uh, working like that, and I do believe I hear a Yiga. Yeah, I do hear a Yiga member. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Really now? Let's get going. Let's just get going. No, no, no. Should leave this guy alone because uh, I don't want to lose my horse right now because, yeah, he's going to end up attacking the horse on accident. But the way to get a horse to easily grow, whoa, to easily grow bondness with you is to constantly pet it like this right after you uh, speed up. I noticed that's the best way instead of constantly spamming it. Because what I used to do is when I'd get a new horse, is I'd just sit and spam the Soothe. And I mean, it wouldn't really do much. 
But as you can see, if I go ahead and speed up, uh, let him slow down, and then hit soothe, it will be. Oh wait, let me do it now. There we go. It will. Yeah, it'll be an instant, uh, like uh, affection boost. If that's what it is, I don't really know what it is that we see when that happens, but yeah. Um, <laughs> anywho, let's go ahead and continue our trek down here. But yeah, I do want to show off how the bow of light works against certain enemies once we're given the option to teleport around and stuff. Um, this video overall is just kind of messing around with a certain glitch. I personally am not a huge fan of exploiting in video games, but, you know, the bow of light... It was an item actually I actually really wanted, and I was just kind of messing around, seeing if there was a way I could get it. Stumbled upon in this glitch, and I think it's overall really cool. So yeah, I have to kind of show it off. I don't really plan on doing much out of it. I hope, uh, you know, maybe in the next Zelda game, if it is similar to this, if Nintendo definitely kind of goes in this route, like Breath of the Wild, that they kind of change the whole feel, at least. What the heck, we have another Blood Moon? Wait, what? Uh oh. Wait, why do we have a blood moon? I feel. Or do you get a blood moon every time during the final battle? That might be the case. But you'll see what happens. Like I, like I mentioned before, when a blood moon does happen during the final battle, it will constantly um, shrink, which I'll show off what happens. So I do believe we're still technically in the final battle. And yes, we just ran across a traveler. There are a couple travelers, I do believe that still exist along with the animals, so it's pretty cool, but, um, and yeah, we can't speak to them, they're like normal NPCs, but I don't think it means much, but all right, yeah, I do want to keep an eye on this, and let me go ahead and see how close we are, I mean, we'll get there eventually, we're almost there, like, this horse is doing fine, so, yeah, I don't think the dragon's do roam around during the final battle as well, so I doubt we'll see them, but at least while we're heading there, I could shoot some light arrows at the Blood Moon as it's slowly going to turn into a normal moon, a normal moon I believe. I don't know, what happens if the game does entirely glitch out for me? I've actually, like, I've barely really messed around with this. Like I said, I've figured this out, and I kind of want to record all of the exciting stuff about this, but no, 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 okay, wait, let's hurry, get out of here, let's, uh, try to see if I can keep an eye on the moon, no, well, I missed it, well, either way, as you can see, it cleared up, yeah, all that happens is the blood moon turns into a normal moon, thing is, I happen to be, yeah, uh, right by a giant freaking cliff that blocked the whole thing, but, I mean, we might see it again, I think the blood moon's gonna constantly appear, every single night because we're never going to trigger the blood moon and um just because we're in this weird glitch mode where yeah <laughs> things aren't normal in hyrule at the moment but all right we're almost to lurlin village and once we make it i could ditch this horse i don't need it because i mean once fast traveling is an option it's gonna be easy but yeah uh i don't plan on saving i you can pretty much go through all my resources when doing this and I mean if any of you guys plan on doing this I highly suggest having as much fun with it but do not save once you make it to Learnland Village because yeah right now like I said we can't save we can't teleport but that's the whole point of heading to Learnland Village is to get that ability to do so and uh, once we do hey look another citizen you know what I just want to go ahead and see who this is so, is this actually a Oh, it is! Okay. Never mind. I thought it, it could have been a Yiga's, a Yiga clan member, traveler. That wouldn't surprise me if that also made its way into the, um, to like the, I guess you could consider this the after battle, the post, the true post game. This is what really happens after Breath of the Wild. Every NPC disappears. Hyrule never actually is restored. Ganon just rampages around while Link has fun. And, oh, look at that, another traveler, that's cool. But all right, we have arrived now. It didn't take us too long. I mean, it will be worth it because now I can use the bow of light to my advantage. So yeah, mini game that's over here is a rupee collecting mini game. This is a really easy way to farm for a lot of rupees because you can do the same thing you do in any 
rupee collecting or I guess gamble like mini game where you save and then constantly play the game so yeah I believe what happens here and what triggers the NPC to appear is because when you head inside you open up a chest right and then this guy suspiciously starts talking so now you're forced to interact with an NPC I think that's why this uh, kind of fixes the whole uh, in battle glitch and kind of puts us out of the battle but <laughs> Overall, yeah, really clever how this was figured out. I didn't figure this out on my own. I'm just saying I kind of like when I was searching for the glitch, I've uh, I've seen that that's how you get out of the hole, uh, not being able to teleport and save. But the saving thing means nothing. We don't want to save at all because if our auto saves catch up, we're stuck in this mode forever. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and open up a chest and a green rupee. I could care less. I'm good now. I can leave. So, thank you very much. No, I don't think so. Uh, let's leave now. So, NPCs don't really return, but if I do this, yes, we can now travel. And if I go to save, I can save, but I'm not going to save, like I said. So, thank you very much, Horsey. You know, you've been of use, but uh, it's time to say goodbye. So, I'll just drop these apples and... Uh, yeah, I'll let you be. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and now, um, I want to test out the blow of light on pretty much every overworld enemy we can test it out on. I feel like that's pretty necessary, right? But before I do that, I know a lot of you guys might be questioning this, and that is, can you hang the bow of light on your wall? Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. I gotta show off everything I can do with this bow of light because, yeah, how cool would it be to hang it? I mean, if you get the Twilight bow with the uh, Princess Zelda amiibo, then you're good. I actually like the way that one looks much more than the bow of light in this game. Because the bow of light in this game reminds me a lot of the uh, Zora bow that's in this game as well. The Silver Scale bow, I believe is the name of it. I don't know. I don't really like the way it's shaped. Um, I just prefer the more elegant looking bows that like the Twilight bow looks. Twilight Bow looks so much better, and it really fits the whole Bow of Light feel. This one still looks nice, and I mean, this one's better in the end because it's infinite. But as, you can, as you can see again, yes, I'm standing on nothing, aka the shrine. I'm in the air, wee! <laughs> okay, now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, make our way to Link's house and try to set this up on the wall. Yes, yeah, so definitely want to show this off because I'm sure a lot of you guys might be curious so let me answer that for you and bam uh okay yeah as you can see it unequipped it for us that's it that's all it does but if you try a different one boom so we're good we can equip stuff on the wall but just not the bow of light because it was never meant to be i guess it, it doesn't have a model that is on the wall like this because the models on the wall look different than the ones on the floor because the ones on the floor uh, aren't to scale like that. Like, this is bigger than the ones on the floor. Actually, it's really interesting. And Oh, you can't drop it? What? That's insane, because how do you take a photo of it? Because there's a photo of it in the game. Uh, maybe you can drop it in the final boss fight area, or maybe you can't drop it all. You're supposed to take a photo of it. Like, get off Epona, take a photo of it, then grab it while it's still floating in the air. I don't know. But anyways, that's what happens when you do that. Now, since uh, there are no NPCs within the game, I'm sure some of you guys may be wondering, what about Gerudo Town? You know how there are two guards blocking the way? Well, let's go ahead and sneak in as a Vo and not a Ve. I mean, that should be able to work, right? Well, let's go ahead and show that off. Yeah, I just want to pretty much show off everything within this weird glitchy mode because, I mean, it's interesting. I don't know why. I feel like this is a different like realm of the game that we're in and we got to explore everything within it uh overall like i said i'm not a fan of glitches but this here is something i'm really into i don't know why just exploring everything like this but as you can see yeah the shrine would have been just surrounded by sand like this but all right so <laughs> here is garuda town let's go ahead and enter it and um looks good i mean the, the coast is clear no one's there oh there's someone here, you know, a couple travelers, like I said, a couple travelers do exist, but <gasps> wait a second, yeah, sound alarm, a Vo has tried to enter, yeah, we've been 
caught. They somehow appear out of thin air to kick us out. I, I don't know how. It doesn't make sense. But obviously the game will never allow us in. Uh, dressed up like this, it makes sense. And, well... Okay, yeah, they fade away. I was gonna say, wait, are they gonna stay for us? But no, they actually do fade away. So once they do their job, they're like, all right, peace. We're good. No need to uh, stay around any longer. But all right, next thing I want to show off is the Great Fairy because, I mean, that must also be something a little bit interesting to see. Will she appear? All these NPCs aren't appearing. So let's go ahead and check out that as well as walk around Kakariko Village. Maybe check out Impa's house. Uh, see if that works. I'm just going to show off everything before I get into killing off enemies, but I will get into that, so don't worry. We do want to kill as many enemies with the Bow of Light, even though there aren't many enemies in the overworld. We only have Hinoxes, uh, the Taluses, the... not even Lynels, because Lynels aren't bosses within the game, so... They disappear just like the Moblins and the Zolfos and, uh, you know, the Bakabuns and all of that, but... We do ha still have uh, also Molduga, and I think that will be really interesting to show off. But, all right, so this, oh, wow, even the platforms are loaded in differently. So even the Sheikah platforms don't really exist. It's so interesting how they're like a separate layer than the rest of Hyrule, like the Sheikah stuff. Not all of the Sheikah stuff, just the stuff that relate with the shrines. Uh, because all of the towers are still intact, um, and I mean, they shine bright like ever, but maybe because they're so important to Hyrule, they couldn't really separate that. I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know how game development works, so I mean, I don't really know why I'm questioning it too much. But, alright, here we are in the Great Fairy, and it already looks somewhat off. Alright, we can climb down, and as you can see, somehow we managed under water, because yeah, I guess since her spirit isn't here and we can't call her... We, it, it, the, the pond just does not work anymore, um, but, I mean, obviously she doesn't really live underneath it, it's, uh, she just appears, but look, even the textures, they're broken up, like, the game isn't fully loaded, I guess just the Great Fairy Fountain isn't loaded in, this wasn't meant to happen, of course, we weren't supposed to escape the final battlefield, so, this isn't really as, um, you know, as polished as it should be because yeah everything shouldn't be loaded up I'm surprised this much is even you know being able to uh, work like everything still seems slightly intact if anything it's just the NPCs are missing in the shrines but other than that everything else is loaded up uh, what's also really interesting is the fact that Calamity Ganon's aura is no longer around Hyrule Castle obviously because he's in the center of Hyrule and uh, the beams from the Guardians aren't shooting anymore but that makes sense but anyways yes Impa is no longer here. We can get a better view of the scroll. I actually have this exact thing in person from the special edition of this game. It's so awesome. I actually want to get it framed because, I mean, it tells a whole story. Literally, the whole story is in this. Um, all, you got to zoom in specifically on every single thing, and it's all put together. It's so nice where you see the hero and the princess 10,000 years ago. Seal Calamity Ganon with all the guardians and divine beasts on their side. This game it was the opposite. They weren't on our side, but we at least got the divine beasts back. Anywho, yeah, that's that. Let's go ahead and check out a shop, actually. I do want to see if I can steal. Obviously, you can't because you have to speak to the clerk when it, touching an item. So, as you can see, arrows, yeah, they don't exist because... There's nothing, there's no one here to tell us anything, which is interesting, but, alright, so that's that. Now, I guess we'll show off Korok Forest, because Korok Forest is filled with little Koroks, of course. We got the great Deku Tree. Uh, I think that'd be one more place I want to show off, and then we'll get to killing enemies. I just feel like, you know, for those who might leave a comment asking, you know, what happens if you go check out this place, well then, let me, yeah, just show off every place just in case. So I'm not going to see every single town because that's not really going to get us anything. As you saw, Kakariko, which is a pretty busy town, has no one in it. The population is now zero, so yeah, we're not really going to get anything out of that. But all right, let's go ahead and check out Korok Forest. And the uh, Koroks that disappear are still here, but that makes sense because you can't speak to these little guys. They're just there to, uh, you know, disappear. It's such a nice... Wait, I like, you know, how the forest and everything. I love it. Overall, Korok Forest 
is like one of the coolest areas and it's so nostalgic even though it's all original in a sense you know you still get that lost woods vibe and everything but i mean because lost woods in front of us but i mean ocarina of times lost woods that is uh, regardless, yeah, the Great Deku Tree is still here. Let's go ahead and check out the shop. Uh, I believe Hetsu is no longer there, sadly, so let me go ahead and check out his little, yeah, spot. He's gone. Um, hmm, I wonder if maybe we can still do the trials. Because if that's a possibility, then that also might be an exploit to speak to, like, an NPC to get us out of the battle. I'm gonna check, uh, before I leave, because I don't really know, but... Here is the shop. I wish I could just pick up all this stuff and steal it, but I can't. Uh, so, yeah. Now, uh, one more thing I want to show off is speaking to the Deku Tree. Can I at least speak to him? Deku Tree, do you see me in this weird world of nonsense? He does, and he speaks about the Calamity. Well, the Calamity is currently spreading its uh, evil all across Hyrule. And I'm here just relaxing with my awesome bow of light. Check it out. I can chew as many times as I want. I don't know. This is pretty stinking cool. It's not going to get old. Infinite arrows. Like, the game really ha uh, has you admire the whole uh, items lasting forever. Like, that's something you never really, really think in a Zelda game. Like, wanting the item to last forever. Because that's that was never an issue. But now it is. <laughs> All right, um, is the Korok here? He should be standing right here. Or since we solved the trial, it's, oh wait, this is not even, no, this is it. So yeah, I guess that Korok isn't here either. Okay, so you can't even do the trials. And I'm assuming I could still do this trial specifically because, as you can see, I never fully completed the Lost Pilgrim Ridge, so I'm assuming I have to redo it but that didn't seem to be the case at least in this world in this weird fantasy <laughs> of uh you know no npc existing okay so i think we've shown enough now let me i guess show off one more thing before we get to fighting off enemies and that is don't worry it's enemies guardians i want to see if they do exist i'm not exactly sure if they do i don't think they do i think the guardians also since they're non like you know boss enemies They've also despawned off of the map, so they're not really in the map, but I'm just going to show off the best area to show three guardians, one mobile, and two uh, inactive guardians, which literally are right around the central tower. So, yeah, it's a good example. And whoa! Wait, are we back in the battle? So is something crazy going to happen right here? Zelda again? So we get the text again on the screen, and what the heck? The, um... The uh, tower is not loaded, the texture, this is really weird. Oh, but it still has the center part, I can't walk in the center. The music is back though, and yeah, her voice is here, you know, she's speaking and stuff, it's cool Zelda, okay. So, uh, huh, it, they're not here. They're not, and the, it's just like they're dead. I love how my Master Sword is always intact anywhere I go. Alright, now it's time to face some foes so um let's think where is any oh i just remembered the best place to take on more hinoxes is um pretty much the central area right here this my friends it's not really central but here in nakuda you'll find three hinoxes the brothers you know the um the three siblings the three giant brothers i believe is the name of the um shrine quest regardless we can easily test it out on them, and then I'll be sure to find a Molduga, which should be easy to locate, as well as um, a Talus. You know, one of the Taluses, and I'll kill that off as well. I don't think there's anything else that will be out in the overworld that's a overworld boss that we can kill, sadly. I mean, I really want to show this against the Lionel, like an infinite bow to where I can spam it on a Lionel. That sounds amazing, you know? It's not that Lionels are really difficult, it's just that, yeah, they're so intimidating in the way they act and everything. And for what they are, I feel like they are the toughest boss, or the tough, toughest enemy within the game. I'm not saying they're tough, I'm just saying they're the toughest, because all the other enemies are pretty easy. So, to me, yeah, I just, you know, really love taking on Lionels. And whoa, the, uh, the freaking effect that it does when, um, when... Killing an enemy is really interesting, but all right, so let's see. Wait, he's not even spawned in. Or is he dead? Okay, well, that Hinox is dead. Uh, I didn't really 
think too much about that. Might be because I killed it. And, uh, yeah, it might be because I killed it when farming. I believe, like, on stream or maybe even off screen. So, let's find a different Hinox to kill, which, um... I mean, I have a feeling, yeah, all the ones around this area might be dead, but I mean, there's still so many Hinoxes. I'm trying to think of one that's also a black Hinox, because the black Hinoxes are usually the toughest. Um, you know what? While, while I try to think of one, let's just go to Gerudo Town, or to Gerudo Desert, because I do know a Molduga will appear there, and that will definitely be of use, because, yeah, don't worry, the enemies are still there, it's just... If I killed them beforehand and didn't get a blue, I was going to say a blue moon, what? A blood moon, then yeah, it wouldn't work. But wait, what? The textures for this are still here. That's so weird. Okay. Anyways, yes. Mulduga time. Let's face this guy. All right, hopefully I can. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Come on, jump. Yes. This is my chance. As many light arrows as possible, I will shoot while this guy's still in the air. Oh, this is so sick. You know what? Wait, wait. I bet I can continue this. You may wonder how. Well, hopefully I have a stamina potion. Okay, no, I got this. Energizing me. Ske fish skewer, actually. But either way, yes. Oh, the slow-mo is no longer gone. Oh, wait. I accidentally fell without noticing. So let's jump in the air. I only want to hurt him with the light arrow. So, yeah, we got to continue using the bow of light on him. Wow, that animation is sick. The way it just explodes like that. Alright, and... Oh, man. We almost got this. Or I'll stasis you and then finish you off with one... Alright, just one. I was gonna count to two. But no need. The bow of light is much stronger than we think. <laughs> yeah, it dispels. I mean, it took a while. It only does, what, 50... A da hundred damage? What? That's not true. Does it really do a hundred per hit? I feel like... Because when you use a Savage Lionel bow, they I feel like they do way more. But I guess it's because it doubles. It triples, even. Huh? But it would still be close to 100. I don't really know. For some reason, I feel like... Maybe they're the same strong. I should try them both. That's what I'll do. And we'll see. Because they should literally do the exact same damage. It should be, like, off by, like, one or something. But, um... Alright. So! Where is another Hinox? Well, I guess we could check the... Uh, gut check rock. Hopefully, I didn't defeat that one. I know that one's a tough Hinox. It's a black Hinox. So, it's similar to the oldest kin in the Three Giant Brothers, which was the one I was hoping to face, but sadly failed. But whatever. I mean, hey guys, you know, we're doing an experiment here. Some stuff happens. I might fail. <laughs> I didn't really think of uh, not having these enemies respawn. Like, I should have. But ahead of that before doing this because, yeah, Blood Moons still take a while regardless to spawn, especially once you know where the enemies are and know where to kill them. I feel like, yeah, I know where every single overworld boss is, but it's hard to remember which one is the Hinox I'm looking for. So hopefully this one is alive and well. It might not be. This would be hilarious if he is. I can't fully tell. Okay, he's most like yeah, he's not here. Huh. Somehow I killed this one too, but I can assure you there should be Hinoxes. Because we found one, didn't we kill one on accident? I believe I literally stum stumbled upon one without noticing. There's one over here. There's one. Oh, wait, there's one. Okay, giant Giant's Forest actually has a black Hinox. I'm only looking for the black ones, and I'm sorry, but I'm trying to yeah think of them off the top of my head. Because we already killed a red one. No need to kill another one. That one didn't take that long. So, yeah. I do believe in the Giant's Forest there is a black one, I think. So, once I kill that, I'll kill, like, a Talus. And then we can kind of end off all of this. Like I said, I'm just kind of experimenting while we have the Bow of Light with this. Because there's not really much else to do since we can't speak to NPCs or enter anything. And every time I see this happen, it's so weird. But, all right. So yeah, the Giant's Forest should have a Hinox. I, I'm not too sure if it is a giant one, but again, it's Zelda is speaking to us. Um, you know, I, I I don't really mind it too much, but honestly, I do think the final battle would have been way more epic if it just played the music and Zelda didn't speak. 
And it might just be because I'm not a huge fan of her voice, per se. Like I said, it's, it has nothing to do with, you know... I don't know, I just feel like it's literally just the way she delivers every line sounds forced or fake in that sense. Um, it just sounds like a cartoon character. And I just feel like Zelda, even though, yeah, this is all a fantasy world, and at the end of the day, this is a video game, you know how serious I take this game, guys. So, you know, if I felt, yeah, if just Zelda's voice had more emotion, that would have been much better. But, hey, look. Hey, Horace, okay. I mean, yeah, she sounds just, like, overly passionate right now. Like, I don't in a fake way. It's hard to explain. It just reminds me, like I said, of the voices I give the characters, which I know aren't good voices. Like, I know the, the voices I give the characters within this game sound really fake. That's because I'm not really a professional voice actor, and that's what I feel like is an issue with Zelda's voice. And it sounds professional. So, yes, I insult myself to give an example, but... It's the truth. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get at. All right, so I'm going to aim for the eye as much as possible and see how much damage we do. Wait, will this change the way the battle works? Or can we not see Hanox's HP? Huh. Oh, I know. It switched. Okay. So, bam. Wait, wait. I actually want to... I'm curious. Wait, what? Oh, wow. It doesn't... I was wondering, are we not hurting him? But it's because it's so glitched with the Ganondorf battle. But... Yeah, we made a quick work of this black Hanox as well, similar to the red. Um, all right, so let me think what kind of talus I, I mean there are a lot of easy ones here these stone taluses But you know what? Let's do the frost talus and I do believe the easiest way to the frost talus is Either one of these two points. Let's just teleport to one of them. So sorry Zelda again. I'm gonna leave the battlefield and uh, make my way to uh, yeah, Hebra Mountains, because I do believe we can fight the Frost Talus, which we've done before in a side quest, and I wanted to shoot it with, uh, I, light arrows, that is, as many times as possible. Uh, sadly, we can't try this on anything else, I don't believe. I think it's, like, the last thing we'll be able to really put this to use in, but, um, alright, let's go ahead and put on this, and... It doesn't really matter what we do. Like I said, we, I can use every item. I can just go ham with all everything because we're not saving. This is not an actual episode, you know? This is just us messing around um, because I will definitely just turn off my game when I'm done. I'm not going to bother saving. It'd be hilarious if I accidentally saved and just screwed up my file. But let me see. Do we have all loading screens gone? Yeah, we do. So if I save, then I'm stuck in this... Uh, you know, glitched out world. And like I said, I really advise for you guys not to do that mistake. But yes, I love how the I said this before, but I just love how the Master Sword is working all the time. I wish we were given the option of this in the game. And you know, if you were, I would say the Master Sword Beam is super useful. It's just you can't use the Master Sword Beam uh, as, like, it's not as effective unless you're doing double damage like it is now. Unless the Master Sword Beam isn't affected with it. I mean, in general, I never use this beam. I could care less because, um, it takes forever to charge and, yeah, like, I, said, I don't really think the damage is a lot. But, alright, let me just get off this guy. I don't want to actually fight him like that. I want to use the, I, the light arrow, yeah, with the bow of light. So, let's go ahead and see. Uh, you know, we're doing pretty good damage, but now I actually want to compare it with this. And we're going to use normal arrows. So... All right, let me use stasis on him so I can get a good shot. And then, let's see. Whoa, that was way more, yeah. Hmm. I don't know, I don't believe that. Th oh, this is times five, I'm stupid. Okay, my bad. Yeah, it does the same damage. It does like 100. So I guess the, it does, the bow of light does do 100. I just, I didn't expect, I just thought it was gonna do more. I don't know why, but do we have a different- let's, let's try this crappy royal bow and put it to the test. So, sorry, I don't want to kill you. So wait, let me, uh, stasis you and then shoot you. Ah, uh, pretty good damage, alright, but now it's time to end it off. So, yeah, the end. There we go. That is that for the Frost Talus. And, um, yeah, it's, it's so nice to just have a bow that shoots really well really quickly infinite arrows i mean really it's really op it makes sense why you can't keep it forever 
But if they had something half as good as this, just a bow that never broke, I'd be happy with that. I don't need the infinite arrows. I don't need superior damage. Just a bow that doesn't break that looks somewhat as cool as this. You know, because I don't really, I mean, I don't mind the royal bows, but there's so many of them in the game. You also get them from Amiibo that they're not, you know, as valuable. And I don't know, the look doesn't look as cool. Like, it reminds me of the Master Sword Scabbard, but not complete, like a bootlegged version. Um, because obviously the purple, it's purple instead of like, it's dark blue the Master Sword has. And But it's like going for the same thing. I don't know. Like, it has similar colors, but not the exact colors. Would have been cool if the royal stuff was the exact same colors as the Master Sword stuff. But then again, I guess they want to differentiate it. I don't know. I'm just picky, I guess. I think that's what it really boils down to. But, anyways, I guess that's about it. I mean, I'm going to have to turn off my game now. But hopefully this, you know, works for you guys if you guys want to try it out. But, yeah, make sure you don't save at all unless you're wanting to replay through the whole game again there might be a patch if you do end up in this weird limbo um or maybe a way to escape it maybe there's something more to do i don't know let me know if you guys tried this glitch if you know of it like the more info the better i'm interested in i mean i'm mainly making this video share it with you guys so yeah if you guys have any info be sure to let me know but again this thing has left and you know what to kind of end all of this off, why not take a photo of uh, Link in this awesome bow? And let me just switch back to, um, let's see, I can wear the, nah, I don't need to wear the Twilight Princess stuff. Let me just wear what I normally wear, which is, yeah, stuff. Now that I've upgraded the Hylian Trousers, I can wear that over the Ancient Greaves until I upgrade the Ancient Greaves one more time. But, anywho, yeah, the Bow of Light is amazing for what it is, and as you can see, Link is holding it. But what's really awesome is you can actually hold the Bow of Light in a photo if you do this. Yeah. Freaking awesome. And uh, the way Link looks is so sick holding it like that. You can't go any further. Right, let me take this photo like that. It looks freaking awesome. Yeah. That is the Bow of Light on our compendium. I should do that against the final boss and actually beat him. I guess that's the only way to take a photo of the Bow of Light. I, I totally forgot that you could do this and it scans the Bow of Light. I'm so dumb. So this is how you take a photo, of course. But these are other gestures or like things you can do if you hold the L button. So as you can see, these are the normal ones we're given. But obviously, we have these ones. I forgot to show these off, but I do like these ones. You're looking down and I'm looking up. And then we got the prepare for sword combat and the prepare for range bow combat. But... Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I'm snapping so many photos of the hero with this legendary bow. I don't know really where I'm going with this, but anyways, uh, I guess I will end off the video here. You know what? I think I'm trying to get a thumbnail right now, so I think we got it. <laughs> all right. So yes, thank you all so much for watching this. Episode, this wasn't really an episode of Breath of the Wild. If there's any more glitches, things you want me to kind of check out within the game, let me know. I will definitely do so. I mean, I, this is, yeah, the game I play non-stop. I want to, you know, just kind of mess around with it and try a lot of other things, including even exploits. So, if there's anything else you want me to show off within the game, let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. And eat this, Calamity Ganon. Or, I mean, I guess Dark Beast Ganon. You know what, Zelda? We get it. You can't hold much longer, but I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> all right. Bye.